We're back to this week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, Metro Councilman at Large Jerry Maynard, and her daily on 1510 WLAC syndicated talk show host Steve Gill. Welcome. Nice to see you guys back. Good to see you again. Just got back from New Hampshire, so yes. let's talk about the New Hampshire win for Mitt Romney. Two in a row, big win. We thought it was going to be. What what'd you take from watching the, the process happen up there? Yeah, I think, and we mentioned off the air that it, it was a lot less electric in New Hampshire this time. And the, the reporters from all over the country that have been there a lot of times, like we have, were noticing there wasn't the enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. And part of it may be that, that the increase in Facebook and social media as a way of reaching out to voters means it's less significant to be on a street corner holding up a sign, having 50 people do a street corner rally. Also, you only had one party instead of both parties vying for the nomination. But it definitely lacked the electricity. And part of that is you don't have electric candidates in that Mitt Romney is running a team. TV campaign, mm -hmm. a structured campaign, all the candidates had very controlled events, so you didn't just have these big mass rallies on the street. And it really did affect the feel, whether or not that will also have an impact on New Hampshire in the fall, because it will be one of those swing states, I think, remains to be seen. And that's what these guys have to recognize when they're battling in Florida in a few weeks. What they do there also has an impact as a battleground state in November, too. We head south now to, New Howard, to South Carolina, then to Florida from the Democratic perspective. Is it over with? Is it Mitt Romney's going to be the nominee? I think Mitt, Mitt Romney's going to be the, the nominee uh, ultimately. The question becomes whether he comes in limping and he's damaged. And I believe that's what, what's happening now is he made a crucial mistake when he said that Bain's mission was to create jobs, which it's not. A venture capitalist uh, firm's major uh, thing is to make money. It is not to create jobs. So when he came out and said it creates jobs, he had not been challenged into New Hampshire. And I think one of the reasons why New Hampshire was not electric is because people don't love Mitt Romney. He is going to be the pragmatic her pragmatic <laughs> person that they're going to elect, just like we elected John Kerry in 2004. South Carolina be the kind of the, the, the end of it for several people? You think it will go on past that, the primary? I think Rick Perry, unless he can somehow make a huge surge in the week that remains, is going to be done after that point. If Newt Gingrich can either win or finish second in South Carolina, I think he's a guy that can live to fight another day. He has some national money. He has some national reputation. But if, if he finishes back in the pack, if he somehow gets passed by Ron Paul, I think it's hard for him to continue, and I think, uh, I think Perry's done. We haven't heard much yet from the GOP because it just happened, but... Friday, as we tape this, the president came out asking Congress for permission to shrink the size of government. It's what Republicans want to do. I guess they want to look at the nuts and bolts of what the president wants to do. But where does this plan go? Some are saying that maybe that Congress should not acquiesce that authority, that that's Congress's authority. On the other hand, if the smaller government is what people want, the president should have the authority. And the president did a good job politically by putting the Republicans in the corner. And so if they vote against it, again, they're being seen as, you're just anti-Obama, you're not for America. And as John Huntsman said, put country first. And Obama has to say, let's put country first, let's shrink the government, this is what you say you're for, do it. If they don't do it, Bob, it makes them look again that it's just about Obama and it's not about the country. I think process matters. So whether it's the president doing it by executive order or by doing it legislatively, which is how it should be done, I think that is, is significant, and that's how you have to follow the rules. But frankly, I think the Republicans need to see what is the plan he's putting forward. Mm -hmm. In the past, the president has said he was for spending cuts. He was willing to put Social Security, Medicaid reform on the table, but he never put it on the table. This is a president who talks but doesn't actually do, and we need to see if this plan has any do or whether it's all talking. And it's out. still limited. Right now, it's just like six agencies being combined. It, hasn't, it isn't a big overall picture just yet. Right. Now, some of them, Laden would not agree with Steve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably not. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk Tennessee. Legislature's back in session. This is the end of the 107th General Assembly election year, so hopefully the legislative session will be a little bit shorter, redistricting the big issue. Looks like it's been settled. Democrats were not pleased. A couple of, of district lines got tossed and redone to, to appease the Democrats. Is it going to end here? Will it go to court? Will it be a challenge? There will be a challenge. It will come out of Shelby County because you have African Americans uh, increased by 127,000 uh, people in Tennessee, and yet you're going to have a reduction at a maximum of three African Americans in the General Assembly, or maybe one. And so you're going to at least have two cuts, rather. And so I think that you're going to have a lawsuit out of Shelby County because you have three African Americans pitted against each other in that seat. And so what you're going to do is you're going to lose three seats, possibly a fourth seat in Hamilton County, and I think that's where the lawsuit challenge will come. From. I think the bigger problem that you have is the population shift. Shelby County, as a proportion of the rest of the state, lost population. You've seen a huge, massive growth in the suburban area, the Williamson, Wilson, Rutherford, Sumner County areas in Nashville. That population shift to Middle Tennessee meant you had to shift the state Senate seat from Shelby County over into Middle Tennessee. That's what the shift was. It mm -hmm. wasn't based on race, based on population. And it really is the party in power. The spoils goes to the victor. Even Mike Turner told me when the Democrats were in power in 92, Republicans kind of got the short end of the stick. That's going to happen. The question is, is what they came up with, is are those lines legal? 
and fair as, as can be according to the population of, of the state of Tennessee. And I guess that's what the court would look at. Well, I look at it again. If you have an increase of African Americans by 127,000 in this census, and yet you reduce the number of African American representatives because you have drawn the lines in order to have two incumbents run against each other, that is a challenge out of Shelby County. I think that if you look at the rest of the state, the only other possible legal challenge is Hamilton County, where you have Tommy Brown, Tommy Brown versus uh, Joanne Favors. Again, putting two African Americans into one district, having them running against each other, even though the African American population mm -hmm. in Chattanooga increased. I think the problem is if you're trying to draw lines based on race, your assumption is people only vote based on race. We've got Congressman Allen West in a majority white district down in Florida. You've got Steve Cohen in a majority black district in Memphis. I think people ought to be given credit for voting for people rather than race. And I think, frankly, this idea that we ought to draw lines based on what you are to determine how you're going to vote is really, frankly, an affront and a racist affront to everybody. The congressional lines seem to be in agreement with everybody. The districts actually look like they're a little bit more attuned to where they should be, not drawn all over the, the map of the state. And the big win for the Democrats, Davidson County and Nashville, did not get divided up. Well, and we're happy about that, the fact that Davidson County is intact. And we added, I believe, Cheatham County and Dixon. Dixon. And so we have those two counties added instead of going to Wilson County. I think that's a good thing for the Democratic Party. What I'm not happy with is that we're going to be limited to two over the next 10 years until we have another census. And I think that what the Republicans did is say, okay, you guys can have two, Shelby and Davidson County, and the rest of the state belongs to the Republicans. That's okay. The Democrats have been drawing the line since the Civil War. <laughs> it's about time for somebody else to have their fi uh, finger on the pen. About 45 seconds to go. Let's talk about the governor's agenda quickly. He's talking about reducing crime, education, but no real jobs package out there. Well, again, I think we need to recognize that there is a limit to what a governor and the legislature can do when it comes to creating jobs when the national economy is still in the tank. You're not going to have Tennessee as a vibrant uh, bastion of job growth when the national economy still stinks. I think the governor recognizes Iowa that. Iowa and New Hampshire has low unemployment rates because they're doing something about unemployment. We need to do the same thing here. The governor has not led, and what we need to do, the Democrats have got to come up with a message and policy and run on that. It's all about jobs, jobs today, jobs tomorrow, and jobs in the future. If we do that, we will do well in 2012 and win back some of those seats that we lost in 2010. North Dakota has 3% unemployment because they've got oil. We ought to drill for more oil <laughs> in the United States. Then we'll see the unemployment Steve rate. Gil, Jerry Manor, appreciate your time and your insight. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.